Welcome back to Now Leave the Dawn, Zero K fans. This is Shed Fury 333, your host, with another match between Gulda and Google Frog. So Google Frog won the first one. Very surprising. It was, I mean, Apophis, which is a strange but beautiful map, at least aesthetically beautiful. And it's, I think the the map itself is interesting. I like the famine setup. It makes for, I mean, that was a cool game. Like that is going into the the masterclass playlist that I've been talking about before building. I think it's going to go in there just to sh just for how well Google Frog turned that around and generally held their own. That was that was really cool. But they had more pl matches they played, so let's continue with those. This is Icy Shell, a much more typical map. Very flat, but the center really makes bot kind of valuable. So Google Frog starting in the center. Looks like they're either going for the s just straight for the center directly. Gold is starting more in the defensive corner. We'll see though. So Google Frog starting a little aggressive though. The one time I did see a more defensive play did start from the center. The dancer match, the other one that I think is really good to watch. That did start in the center. So I I don't think Google Frog is going to go that defensive, but they might. I mean, they were fairly defensive in the last game, and that that won them the game. So they might try to do that again. But Gulda going for Jump Bot Factory, so both players gone for bots. So this map should be fairly manageable, given that both players have gone for bots. And I just realized that the Icon Height is something I actually kind of need again. Icon Height, come back! I need you! Where are you? Don't leave me! There we go. Actually, I think Icon Height works again. Yes, it does. Okay, cool. Yeah, sorry about that. Anyway, I like to have that because it makes it... If I'm looking across when I have a really steep angle, then it... I just find icons in the distance look bad, but Apophis be... It's so high that it screws with the icon height widget, because the icon height widget bases off of the actual camera height rather than the distance from ground. Maybe it should be distance from ground. I'm thinking it might be best for that to be the case. I'm not totally sure. I mean, as it... Oh, actually, as it is, the height is a bit too high, as it is. I'll have to change that. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I think that's what I had before. Okay, good. That, that'll that work. Sorry about that. I'm going to have to figure out possibly modifying that widget just to make it a little bit easier to work in Apophis or other extremely tall maps. Trojan Hills and Banded Plains would likely have the same problem too. But, I yeah, Google Frog failing to harass, but at least they know the center is not taken. And there goes the center push. Or sort of. Conflict was going for the center. Okay, never mind. Google Fox Commander going to the center. Same commander as before. Same riot, riot cannon strike commander. And same riot cannon strike commander from Golda as well. Both players are pretty used to those commanders. Like them a lot. Now, Golda at this point, they're kind of not in the best of positions. I mean, Google Frog can just kind of harass around, make it difficult for Golda to expand. But Golda hasn't done much for Google Frog. Like, Google Frog has just been expanding. Doesn't really care. Just building, you know. Why not? I haven't really noticed. So Google Frog at this point, I think, is doing okay. They do seem to be taking that center plus five sooner, but Golda has taken more metal extractors earlier on. So right now, Golda is ahead economically. Like, Google Frog seems to be a bit, well, reasonably so, but a bit more concerned about building up defenses. But like I said, that is reasonable. Given the last game, those Lotuses won in the game. That's no surprise that they're building up defenders right now. Just building up defenses in general. Now, why they're building up defenders, they know it's jump bot. Maybe they know something that Failthos didn't. But we saw in that first game that defenders, they aren't the most reliable against Pyros. And Google Fox Commander does have Riot Cannon, so at least they do have that. That is a thing. I mean, it's also, bearing in mind, it's a different map and it's a different matchup. Shield versus jump bot rather than light vehicle versus jump bot. And Shield has a better time versus jump bots. Like, it's just easier for bandits to deal with Pyros. They have rack well, Racketeers are obviously a bit later in the game. And... Hmm. Actually, beyond that, I'm not really sure. They have Roaches, but that's... I don't think it's going to be gone for. Against Pyros this early on, they're probably just going to go for Bandits. They do have Rogues, which aren't a bad idea. Not a, not the worst idea. And of course, Outlaws can slow things down, but that probably won't help. And there's that Lotus, but Golden's Commander coming in here, being... Wow, okay. Riot Cannon has got a bit of a buff, apparently. Oh, Moderator coming along the north side. Google Frog can't take this out yet. 
Their commander being slow to the point that they can't really shoot anything. One more shot from the moderator and the commander is going to go down. I think, yeah, 600 damage. That's not quite enough. Doesn't matter though. Move point. Moderator does go down. And Google Frog not liking this. What is going on with the engine? Okay, what is Gorda talking about? They're they're screaming at the engine. I don't know why. I mean, there are there are reasons. I'm just curious what the specific reason in this case is. Gorda's commander forced back. Actually, are we gonna have tit for tat again? We might. So I don't know. Those pyros are doing a very powerful job. Google Frog not able to take the center, able to take the southwest at least, but not able to take the center. Gorda in a perfect position to take the center. They can just grab that right now if they'd like. But Felon coming in right away, wow. Very fast, just jump for the Felon. I am surprised. I'm genuinely surprised that I don't really see that happening ever. Gorda on the other hand, continuing with the Pyros. Pyros every day, Pyros all day. Except the two moderators. The two moderators are going to try to keep that under control. Anyway. Felon, Convict Ball. A little bit of a risky play, but that's kind of all they have right now. And oh, one moderator down. If both moderators go down, that's going to be a huge deal. But the Felon's got to be careful. The Felon has to be careful. There's only one of it, and there are no other shield supports. Other than the two convicts. So they have to be careful. And the two convicts are only so useful when it comes to supporting the felon. Like at this point, the felon's shield is quite high. It's not helping as much. So nice support there, getting rid of the static defenses there, thanks to the rogue. Now, what does Google Frog know right now? They know... Well, they know sort of what Gota has. But they know that Gota has moderators that are dead. And otherwise, they don't really know much. Hmm. Actually, let's double check that. Yeah, they don't really know what's going on. They know some static defense, that's about it. Actually, come to think of it, they know about these pyros. They basically know everything they need to know. And Golda's commander has been repaired. The felon taking out most of its energy on that, meaning the pyros get free reign, tearing apart the felons, destroying Google Frog's entire army. That is going to be a huge blow. I wouldn't say game, but it's going to be a huge blow. Anyway, Google Frog, or Golda's commander, deciding that walking is too good for it. Because, screw it, I'm going to survive everything. I don't need to walk. I don't need to move my legs. I'll just slide. So yeah, Google Frog is falling way behind. Golda has a massive military. They have a slight economic advantage. Google Frog unable at this point to really pull back in. I would suggest a roach right now. I'm a little surprised it haven't been built. Thug Outlaw is probably not a bad idea, but it's still kind of tricky. Outlaw on its own would be a terrible idea. The Pyros would rip to shreds. Thug Outlaw might work just because of the shields. And that's exactly what Google Frog is going for. We'll see how that works. I think the Pyros... It, the Pyros probably will be kind of inconvenienced by it. I mean, the flames don't penetrate the shields. So the Outlaw can go into the shield and do just fine. And of course, the Outlaw is a riot force. It just mass slow and everything. So that will help a lot with the damage. Well, let's see how this goes. Shielded bandits. Trying to do what they can. Not able to even get... Oh, no. Did they get rid of one? Nope. Not even able to get rid of one. That's going to be a pain. Yeah, as you can see, does hit the shield and hits the shield pretty hard. Now, out Thug Outlaw. There we go. Get that in there. And other than that, Gorda's just taken so much territory. They've taken a massive economic advantage, like double the economy of Google Frog. They have all of this reclaim, which at this point is 2,000 or so. I mean, Google Frog's commander is, I think, among that. Oh no, that's been taken already. The Felon, yeah, the Google Frog's commander has been reclaimed already, but still, that Felon is a lot. And just in general, there's a lot of stuff there. Cannot be taken too conveniently, though, but then again, the Pyro's are not dying. Gorda's keeping their units alive. This is what I was expecting in the last game. I was very surprised that Gorda was playing the last game with so many glaives being thrown to their deaths. Gorda typically is very good at keeping the units alive. So it's a very unusual play. Gorda and Krohn are both like that. They just, they're just they really keen on making sure the units don't die unless they absolutely have to. And 
Google Frog is also fairly defensive, but it's... I'm just surprised that Golda did not play that defensively last game. They are, however, playing fairly defensively this game. I mean, they're losing a couple Pyros here, but they've been repairing, they've been pulling back. I mean, they've been making sure not to lose too much unnecessarily, and this is a pretty big blow. I mean, that cracks open almost all of this area. There is a Lotus, but these two defenders are not that big. But still, that was a lot of Pyros gone. Actually, that was probably a big mistake. But what is Pyros are out of position, too? There is a Jack that's a decent chunk of his military, actually. In fact, what's the Jack and Golda's Commander worth? Okay, so that's half of the military right there, is this Jack and Golda's Commander. Golda's Commander's out of combat, just because it doesn't want to get hit. And the Jack... The Jack is in combat, but the Pyros are not. The Pyros is trying to get around the side, but Thuglaw is going to have a word with that. Not going to let that go in un unattended. Still, that Jack is going to be basically monopolizing all of Google Frog's attention, meaning that Google Frog can't easily do much else at this point. Oh, what is Google Frog going to have to do from here? Like, Google Frog right now... Thuglaw seems to be okay. Are we going to see any placeholders coming in here to try to... Actually, placeholders aren't the best idea. What we need right now... What's needed right now, I think, would be... Hmm. Actually, placeholder wouldn't be a bad idea now that I think about it. Placeholder and Pyro is a very nice combo. Works well together. And that's exactly what we're going to see work out right now. Or is the placeholder going to hit? Because yeah, placeholders kind of bolt, force the shields to stay in one area, and they're already balled up. And then the Pyros come in. However, against the Outlaws, that may not be the best option. Emphasis on May. Like I said, that worked out beautifully. Placeholder Pyro. So Google Frog still not in a comfortable position. Southeast being taken at least, but still not in a comfortable position. Quota has everything in the north. Google Frog doesn't even have everything in the south yet. The placeholder at this point is going to be of limited use. There aren't really... There's not much in the way of shield balls. I mean, the felons are... Sorry, the felons. The rogues are basically it. There are no felons at the moment. Just Thug Outlaw. Rogues will basically counter this. Because they're not going to ball up. Why would rogues ball up? They need to shoot past each other. So they don't ball up. They stay in a line. And then the Thug Law ball getting hit by the Pyros, at least the Outlaws can hit the Pyros, but even then... That's mainly useful for the support rogues, and the support rogues are doing a decent job getting rid of a couple Pyros, but still at the cost of several Thugs and Felons. Sorry, Thugs and Outlaws. That's a lot of metal. That is a huge amount of metal. Gold pointing out is not worth it, and yeah, it's not really worth it. Like those pyros are making cost. Okay, I'm in the lead. As as Gorda says, when there are three times the overall metal value, and even discounting the commander over double the metal value, on top of the economic advantage. Google Frog, however, going for a counterattack. I think Gorda's just going to run past this. Oh, no, they're going to defend. They're going to try to stop this attack directly rather than running past it and going for a counterattack of their own and base trading. No, they're in fact going to go straight for this attack. Try to intercept, and I believe intercept is exactly what they're going to do. And at this point, the idea, the whole Thug Law idea, is not particularly effective. Just because of that placeholder. That's really putting the damper in that. However, it is kind of coming down to interception. I think what'll end up happening is that Gold is going to take out a few units here and there, and once they get particularly confident, if Google Frog attacks on one side, Gold is going to counterattack on the other side and basically wipe out Google Frog before Google Frog can even get halfway across the map. And that's exactly what's happening. Gold going over to the southeast side for a counterattack against Google Frog's attack here. And, and Gold is well aware of what's going on. I and mean, Google, Google Frog is pretty much completely exposed to Gold right now. And the same cannot be said for Gold. Google Frog barely even having half the map in radar. Nope. Just, this is going to be it. I think Gold is going to take out everything here. And this is probably going to be the game. I think Gold is going to take it, and then I guess the last match would be the tiebreaker. I guess that's what it was. They're playing first to two, or maybe just three matches to see what happens. But this looks like it is going to be a tiebreaker on the next map, because this is going to Gold. Google Frog's last ditch attempt coming in here. I mean, the Felon doing a decent job against the Pyros. It's definitely countering them. It's just not enough firepower. That first Felon dying is a huge blow. It was a massive loss. Outlaw's doing what they can, but there's, there's just not enough shields for those felons, and the Pyro's moving in here. And this is exactly what I said. Google Frog will be wiped out before they got halfway across the map. I mean, they didn't even deal any real damage to the infrastructure. Golda can just reclaim all this, and Google Frog has nothing left. And that's GG. That's game. Google Frog losing the army, losing the game. 
throws in the towel, and now it's one and one. So the last game will be on... Give me a sec. Last game will be played on Flooded Valley. Another map you don't see very often, because no one likes sea maps, but I do like to see Flooded Valley from time to time, and it is the third map that they played. I actually checked after and before, it seems like this is the third map they played. So, we are going to have Flooded Valley. Stay tuned for that, that'll be up in just a moment.